Good morning, October 3rd, 2022, on a Monday morning, 9 a.m. straight up. Welcome, whoever might be watching, and I'll get a audio confirmation here by unmuting my speaker. Confirmation, there it is. I hear that. Um, oh, Tony Wallow, $1.99 Super Chat just came in. Thank you, Tony. Alan Barsness, I've seen that uh, question sitting there for a little while since 7.33 a.m. asking if I've heard of an extra PC or extra flash drive stick. And, oh, that's curious. My picture in picture isn't showing. Now, I don't know why that is right now. But anyway, I'll come up here to the Amazon page and uh, yeah, I have heard of them, and I'm very curious about them. I'm tempted uh, once again to buy one and check it out. My hesitation to it is I just can't imagine, best case scenario, what is the best that that thing could possibly do to me, do for me? <laughs> What's the best that it can do for me? And do I care? What would I do with it? I can't quite position as a use for it it actually is it actually has a processor in the stick intel atom processor and you've seen my um microsoft surface computer operating on two gigabytes of ram uh the atom processor can do windows 10 on very low ram so it actually is a processor so how does that work e even this connector doesn't quite look like a USB connection. I haven't read through it much, but anyway, I'm curious about it. But that's not today's topic. Today's topic is something else. <laughs> oh, my most common usage of event viewer. So the way I'm going to introduce that subject is I have notes in my OneNote program for event viewers. So I'll come down here to the taskbar and open OneNote. Then I'm going to come up to the search line on the upper right and type um, Event Viewer. So I'm doing a search for Event Viewer, and I see that I actually have a tab in my technical notes uh, file within OneNote. So here I'm on this Event Viewer tab showing up here. And on this Right side panel, I have different uh, pages of notes that I've made regarding Event Viewer. Now, as you've seen before, those are not set up in a way that is quick and easy for um, people other than myself to understand. I just realized what button I needed to hit to get the picture in picture. So shut down and restart records. Um, that's what I would say is my most common use. And I, I've got notes in here with specific dates on some specific computers that I was uh, making notes about what I was finding. There, then there's, there's this pay, tab right here, this page right here, filter for these events. And I'm going to take that off screen when I click on it. Well, I don't have a whole lot in on, on this page for it but it's event 1 12 and 13 are the ones that i am most interested in when a client is telling me that their computer has been crashing or or maybe i want to know how long has it been since you restarted it a lot of times clients don't give precisely accurate answers and you don't and, and there could be different reasons why sometimes i know my clients or describe when they're describing a problem to me i say how often does that happen they say all the time okay how many times a day yeah six or seven times a day and now sometimes they may be ballpark accurate but i don't know that sometimes they might be inflating the number or the frequency of the problem just because they think by inflating the severity of the symptom that'll make me more motivated to go after it the problem is and what they don't understand and what it's a little bit difficult to explain to them is that if you give me an inaccurate answer i might go down the wrong path 
If you tell me it's a much higher frequency of occurrences of the, whatever problem you're having than what it is, that might take me down a whole different troubleshooting path that is the wrong way to go and it's just wasted time. So I like to go try to confirm what my client is telling me through the operating system because I trust that somewhat better. Don't trust it fully, but I trust it somewhat better than what they're telling me. Over here on this page, I have some other information about the event. So here's crash filters. So these are the events that I would want to search for if I have a computer that has been crashing. So I'll just highlight those, press Control C to copy that. If I want to find out how often they've been using shutdown sleep startup, I'll filter for these items. So I've got these items in the paste buffer right now. I'll go open event viewer. You know what, before I do that, I'm going to take a quick peek at chat and make sure there's no problems being reported. Yep. Okay. Then Windows key event viewer. The word event is enough to get it because I've searched that before on my computer. If the four letters that I type there, E-V-E-N, isn't enough to get you to Event Viewer, then you might have to type more. Next time you go search for that, it'll show up even easier. In fact, how many characters did I actually have to type? E. Well, the letter E was enough for me to get Event Viewer. And then I'll go to Windows Logs and go to System. Now, I usually, when I'm going into Event Viewer, I usually go straight down to here, and I'm typically bypassing the summary information up, let's see, System Security, I think it's way at the top, Event Viewer. Yeah, this gives you the summary information that'll let you know if there's been something that's happened in the last hour, or, uh, or errors in the last hour, warnings in the last hour. So this is a very useful place, but it's not where I usually go when I'm going to go use Event Viewer, because usually when I go to Event Viewer, which is the title of this video, I'm going to the System folder. Now, the first thing that I do in here is I want to sort these in descending order. If you look at these times in here, it looks like it's already sorted in descending order. And usually it is, but sometimes I see something that's just not quite right, or I'll come across something that showing up lower on this list that actually should be showing up higher. So I don't trust the native sorting in Event Viewer. So I'll click on date and time, and that might take quite a while for it to complete, depending upon how much content is in the System tab on, in, on Event Viewer. And on my computer, there's probably a lot in there. Okay, there it finished. Now, the first time you click on this, it's not in descending order, it's in ascending order. This caret symbol at the top here, or the arrow pointed up, is indicating that we're seeing the oldest stuff here. And so you're thinking, wait a minute, 10.3, that's not very old. But look at the scroll bar when I turn my picture and picture off. Down here, the scroll bar is way at the bottom. So I could scroll up, and here I see the oldest content that is in my system tab in the event viewer. So what I typically do is after I've clicked that once, it will finish its sorting. So it winds up this way. I just click it again and it's instantaneous. That'll have me at the top of that screen and with the uh, new list items showing here. Now I want to do that filter. So I come over to the right panel here for filter current log. I come down to Event IDs, click in there, and then Control V for Paste. So I'm pasting those four items. And I have not done this on Big Beast Build. I don't know what I'm going to get here. So here we I see 13, 13, uh, some 1,000 ones. Is there anything in the 6,000 category? I think the 6,000 was um, uh, crashes. Yeah, there's a 6,008. If I double click on that one, that was August 29th. The previous shutdown at 654 was unexpected. So this log entry occurs after you restart the computer. And it's telling us that, hey, the last shutdown was not expected. So power went out or something like that. 
Then what I would go do is, is remove the filters and go explore around that area to try to figure out what happened if I need to. But usually, again, the title of this video, what is my, my most common usage? Something like that was the title. My most common usage of Event Viewer. Yeah, so I'm, I'm usually trying to confirm what my client is telling me and then to go investigate when did the problems occur. Now, it could be that uh, an application crashed, so I, uh, I wouldn't be using these event IDs for that, but I would go try to find out what is the event ID that indicates that application crashed, and then I would filter for that and see how often is it actually happening and when did it happen and try to start narrowing it down. So this event ID 13, at 8 p.m. last night, what was that? And prior to that was also an event 13 at 6.19 a.m. yesterday. So uh, yesterday, yeah. So let's go take a look at what this one is. <clears throat> um, IO control, MRCBT query volume name failed on device. I have no idea what that is. Looks like something failed on a, on a hard drive. That's interesting. I had no idea that that was there. And I have not come across that before. Again, I haven't gone looking though. I'm gonna guess this, oh, this other one probably is the same because it's the same source, MRCBT. Yeah, so let's go look for other 13s. This one is from the Colonel, so that's different. Not the Sergeant, not the Major, but the Colonel. Colonel, <laughs> Colonel Sanders? The operating system is shutting down, so it's saying when I shut the computer down. I rather co commonly, shut Big Beast down at night. And I can turn off that, my jokingly called graphics card fan, that big 10 inch fan that's in the wall back there behind Beast. It blows air from this room into the laundry room. Rather than having all that warm air just caught up in this room. So that's what 13 is. And so what do you suppose 12 is? 12 occurred Here's 6.55 p.m. Uh, code 12 happened the next morning, 6.17 a.m. <clears throat> and that's when the operating system started. So those 13 and 12, that's the normal shutdown and the normal restart. When it's coming from Colonel General, but up here 13 was different. So there's another combination of 1312, 1312, 1312. So this gives, shows me a record of what's been happening with this computer as far as shutdowns and restarts. This 1001, this is from MRCBT. All of those are 1001s from MRCBT. Those are 13s from MRCBT. So there's quite a lot of that. And I might be needing to go look into that. What's going on there? Received GUID volume mount for device. So it mounted hard disk drive L. Drive L is my long-term storage. That's my six terabyte spinning hard drive that I use for long-term storage for uh, you know videos. But that happened at the same time that I just started the computer up. So that's okay. That makes sense that it would be mounting it then. All these others are at the same time. So no, I don't think I need to look into that. That looks completely acceptable. That 6,000 one that we had here, 6,008. Previous shutdown at 1.36 p.m. at 9 on 9.7. So what I want to do is go look at some detail at that time. So I'm just making a note on paper here for that date and time because, no, my memory is not good enough to remember that date and time for the next three minutes. Well, 10 seconds, if I'm going to be honest. So I want to go look at the log during that time. So I'm going to come over here to, uh, I could just clear filter. That's going to clear the entire filter. I'll do that. So now this should draw up all of the events or not. Click away and then click back. That got me to it. And again, I'll sort these. 
Now, at this point in time, I think I, I think the sort is more reliable. I don't really think that I had to resort that again, but just to kind of reaffirm the, the point, I'm doing that. Now, any of these filters can be saved for quick access later on. If I'm going to keep coming back to troubleshooting the same thing on the same computer, I could I could save the filter. I typically don't go to that step. Uh, let's see, I think they'll actually show up up here when you've saved them or there's some place where the where you can just select the filters again. I just I don't I don't do that. Now we're going to wait for it to come up again. Oh, that's still not coming up. All right. Click on setup and then system. That was a little that was a little weird. Now let's go over to filter log because I know the date range that I'm interested in now. I don't want to go scrolling through this because that just can take too long. All right, I am a Doug. I'm going to go click on sorting it again. I just, I just, I just couldn't continue on without resorting it again. Quick glance at chat to see that there's nothing alarming happening there. Okay, so that is finished, and I'll sort in descending order. Then come over to filter current log. So here's any time I'm going to change that to a custom range. So the first event I want is enter a custom date range. Why are these grayed out? These shouldn't be grayed out. To oh not okay, I gotta change it away from first event. I want to say events on. So that's what lets me choose the date range. So I'm gonna say 9-7, not October 7. I want September 7, starting, let's say, at 1.20 p.m. I'll take 1.20 and p.m. And I didn't bother changing the seconds. And then the last event is going to be also 9-7. And I'll do that at 2 p.m., 2.16 p.m. I'm not going to bother with changing the minutes. That'll get me down into a narrow enough, narrow enough range of events that I can scroll through them. Although it's still going to be quite a lot of events. So, But you see the size of the scroll box here. That, that, that's, that's reasonable. That's doable. So there's a lot of stuff in here. So if I go to 97, well, I'm at 97. I want to go to 136. So are these still in descending? Yeah, descending 136. Ouch. There is no 136 there. Oh, that's, yeah, I'm on PM. That's, that's surprising. Am I filtered? Uh, with any events. No, I'm not filtered for any event IDs. This is what I get for doing something I haven't done before live. Well, I haven't done, but it's not fair that I say I haven't done before. I didn't test it on this computer to see what was going, going to come up. Do I have this all right? 9722, 136, sorted in descending order. That was a 6,000 number. I don't see any event IDs 6000. Okay, so what happens if I go filter the current log and do another paste and I'm only in that interested in that 6008 number. And there it is. 9714356. Oh, here oh the previous shutdown. I wrote down the wrong I didn't write down the time of the event. I wrote down the time of the previous shutdown. Now, the previous shutdown was unexpected, so power went out. It wasn't able to make a log event entry saying, hey, the power just went out. So I'm going to make an entry right now, letting you know that the, the, an unexpected shutdown happened. It can't make that log entry because the computer's not on, right? So that that's why I missed that. Uh, now, so 143, what was happening around that time? Fortunately, that time was within the range that I searched for. So I just wrote down that time. 
I'm going to, I don't want to clear the filter. I, cause I want to keep that date range. I'm just going to clear the event ID filter. So now I can go to 143. And if somebody put that, if somebody put into chat before I figured it out, kudos, kudos to you. I'll, I'll see that after I finish the live stream. How are we doing anyway? 20 minutes in. 143, scrolling down to 143, there's a lot of exclamation marks. A distributed column, that comes up a lot in event viewer on, on different computers. And, and I've seen other people just say what I've wound up concluding. If you're not having symptoms with the computer, if the computer's operating all right, then I'm not going to worry about it. Maybe somebody in chat knows what that's about. I, I have researched into it a little bit in the past. I don't remember what I wound up finding on it, but I just basically for years now have just ignored it. 143.56, here it is, uh, 608. So what was happening around that time? This is what it was telling me is that the previous sh shutdown at 136 was unexpected. So if I come down to 136, we already know that there's nothing there. So there's no activity happening there. It's likely that power went out, and a few minutes later, it came back on. Not too worried about it. But digging into these things, when a client is reporting that something, some kind of problem occurs, has been occurring, um, this is my most common usage of um, event viewer is to try to validate what my client is telling me and trying to come up with some answers or suspicions as to what is happening. All right, so yeah, there's some stuff in chat there. I'll go back and read it afterwards. Ken, you should be getting ready and realizing that I'm about to throw the ball to you. Pass the baton. Pass the ball. Hand off, pass forward. I don't know what are the other words that I might use for that. I'm kind of delaying a little bit so that Ken realizes, oh my gosh, he's going to hand it to me early. Yeah, because it's going to be a little early, Ken. <laughs> I do have the redirect set up. There we go. I hope that's been useful. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.